Welcome to another OptaPlanner video. In this video, you're going to learn how to schedule conference talks optimally. So here, for example, we have a number of conference talks assigned to rooms and to time slots. And by doing that more efficiently, we can create better schedules for our, our attendees. This is actually already in use by uh, Vox Zurich, which is a Java conference in Switzerland that recently sent out their accepted talks. Um, and um, so they could start scheduling their, those talks into rooms and to time slots. And they used uh, our OptoPlanner example to do this actually. Um, and uh, besides learning about uh, how to con schedule conference talks more optimally, I'll also talk about how to deal with rockstar speakers who like to party. Uh, because that's one of the constraints, of course, that you might have to deal with as a conference organizer. So, so let's get started. So here's a general overview of how the application works, the conference scheduling app works. It basically takes into it takes an Excel uh, input file or LibreOffice input file, where you define in your rooms, your time slots, your speakers and your talks uh, and your constraints. You give that to the application and it then optimizes that to tell you for each talk to which room and to which time slot uh, it should be assigned. Now, for those of you who are developers, and you don't need to be in a developer to use this app, but for those of you who are, you might want to look into the box there because um, this is actually written in Java and the Excel file just gets transformed into plain old Java objects, into a room, dot cla a room class and so forth. So if you want to integrate this with existing technologies, REST technology or anything like, like that, that's all possible. Then what the application internally does, it actually gives this to OptoPlanner, which is uh, my constraint, uh, our constraint solving engine. And um, it optimizes that, returns the solution to that. And uh, then we simply return that back into an Excel file. So let's take a look at the Excel input file if you want to use this, All right? So um, here's actually the app. So um, I'm going to take this empty, this uninitialized uh, input file. So we've all here we already defined a number of things. Let me zoom in a little bit and let me start with the time slot. I'll explain the constraints in a few minutes. So um, first we define our time slots. So we define uh, in this particular conference, we are holding it for two days um, and we have uh, on each day, we have a number of time slots. So we have the normal breakout time slots, the normal conference talks, which last about 45 minutes, as you can see, right? There's one from on Monday from 10.15 to 11 o'clock. And we also have labs, which span two hours instead of just one hour, right? So you can see some of these time slots actually overlap, right? Um, now, if you're more an advanced conference, I'm thinking, for example, like DevOps, uh, you, you would define your deep dives here, your conference talks, your birds of a feathers, um, your workshops and so forth, right? Those are different type talks. And for each of those, you will have time slots. So you just define those. Uh, one extra thing we can do here is we can actually define tags on these uh, time slots. So for example, here there's no defined, but for example, this is the talk uh, after lunch. So you might actually fill in here after, after uh, lunch, right? And um, you can define multiple tags. You just have to separate them by a comma. Um, but here we just take one tag. And uh, this one is also, this one is not after lunch. Okay. So, and why is this interesting? Because now in your constraints, you might say certain things should not happen into a time slot that's after lunch. For example, if you have a rock star speaker, you might say, well, let's not give him a talk after lunch is if he's talking about a very difficult subject, right? So you might want to avoid difficult subjects after lunch. Okay. Let's take a look at rooms. Um, so here we have 10 rooms, room one up to 10. Uh, same thing again, we can define tags here. So here room one is actually a large room and it is a recorded room. Uh, while room two is not, is not a large room and it's not recorded. So um, you'll see, of course, some speakers, we want to make sure that they are assigned to the large rooms and that they are recorded um, uh, because they are important well, rock star speakers, let's call them like that. And um, other speakers, this is a, a lesser constraint. It's nice if they would be assigned to those rooms, but it's not a hard constraint as it is for some other speakers. Um, I can see this is a lab room, room five, and room 10 is also a lab room. And uh, besides the room, you also have to define when these rooms are available because not all of your rooms might be available all of the time. So you can see here that the normal rooms, room one to four and room six to nine are available for normal conference talks, 
the 10 to 11 slot, the 11, 30 to 12, 15 slot, and, and in the afternoon also two slots and so forth uh, as, we, as we scroll further till the, till the Tuesday. But um, you can see that the lab rooms are not available for those conference talks, but they are available for uh, a slot, the time slots of two hours, right? Of course, um, the time slots defined here need to match those in your first uh, sheet here, of course. Uh, if that is not the case, OptoPlanner, while reading the OptoPlanner example, while reading your the application, while reading your Excel file, will give you a very nice error message and tell you exactly which cell in this spreadsheet there is a mistake and so you can fix it all right um, of course we have speakers um, this is a generated uh, data set by the way you'll see that uh, to the if you look at the speakers names but you have a number of speakers here which will define a number of constraints on but i'll just switch to the talks first so here we have talks so each talk we give it a unique code and it's uh, easy to identify it um, and you can see these are all the talks that were accepted after rcfp ended and after we reviewed all talks right and you can see some talks are of the type lab in this case we have nine lab no eight lab talks and the rest are breakouts um, of course naturally speaking the number of uh, slots you have available for lab talks should be at at, least, at most as many as you have uh, lab talks so if you have eight lab talks you cannot have only seven talks uh, slots to put them in if that is the case optoplan will still try to solve it but you will have two talks uh, in the same room at the same time uh, which is of course something you don't want so you want to make sure that you limit that in advance um, Every talk also has a speaker. So for example, this hands-on real-time OpenShift talk is uh, done by the speakers Amy Cole and Beth Fox. Sometimes it could be multiple speakers. And this is of course one of the constraints that is a hard constraint in OptoPlanner, namely that if a speaker has uh, a talk somewhere and he has, another he has two talks, that those two talks should not be happening at the same time. Uh, why? Because speakers uh, have to ob obey the laws of the universe and they cannot be at two places at, in this, at the same time, of course. Um, so that's a natural const hard constraint. Um, we can also see we have uh, team tags, team track tags. So um, uh, what is a, a team track? That's basically, um, if you go to a conference, you might say, I want to follow anything related to artificial intelligence or anything related to mo mobile or anything related to security. Um, and the idea is, of course, that uh, we try to make sure that we, at any point in time, uh, we only have one team um, at this uh, one talk of uh, a particular team at the same time. So if you want to follow the security track, you can actually see all of the tr security talks um, while you go to the conference, and you never have to pick between two that are happening at the same talk at the same time. Sector talks are basically the same thing, but a, a different uh, order, a vertical basically, where you say, okay, this is this is a talk of, uh, that talks about telecommunications uh, or like education and you will see of course that we try to do the same thing there uh, to make sure that if you want to follow anything related to healthcare for example you can do that as an attendee um, of course every talk has an audience level uh, you can use this, this in this case we went from between one two and three but you can use one to five or one to ten um, but it has to be a number of course because we need to be able to compare it the lower the number the easier the talk the higher the number the more difficult to talk and the more a technical experience you need to have or any kind of experience you need to have uh, we also have content tags that's actually a more fine-grained version of the team tracks you don't of course you, you can use you don't have to fill in these tags as if your conference has no need of them but we'll actually use the content tags together with the audience level a little bit, little bit later this is really the technology we're talking about for example if you're talking there's a specific optoplanner talk or a specific tensorflow talk or a specific um, Where's the OpenShift talks here? Uh, specific OpenShift talks and so forth, right? And you can see, of course, it could be multiple. This is, for example, one that talks about both Docker and Kubernetes. Um, language is also in there. Uh, why is that? Uh, you might have a requirement to say that at any given time, if you have talks in two languages, for example, in English and French, um, you might uh, you might have a constraint that says um, at any given time there should be a talk in French and there should be a talk in English. So that um, if you have attendees who can only speak one of the two languages, that they can still follow a talk and uh, at least understand the language. Uh, so that's that's one of the hard constraints that, of course, is supported uh, out of the box. 
Uh, on top of that, we have a number of required time slot tags and uh, and so forth. So let me go through this. So what does this mean? Well, for each talk, you can define that it should not that it should happen in this particular time slot, or that it should not happen in the particular time slot, or that we would like to happen in a particular time slot, or that we would like not to happen in a particular time slot. So that, those are the four options for each time slot talk tag. So for example, we might say, okay, this uh, this particular talk about TensorFlow, that's going to be uh, difficult. So uh, let's prohibit that from happening after lunch, right? And of course, this tag name needs to match one of the time slot tags. So if I write a typo here, OptoPlanner will immediately tell me that uh, he cannot import this file because uh, uh, there is no such time slot tag. But if I wrote this correctly, I did have an after lunch time slot tag, the exact same, written the exact same way. So um, this will be read in correctly. Okay. Um, similarly, so we can do so we can do required. That means that talk needs to be assigned to a time slot which has that ta tag. Preferred, which means we would like it to be like that. So we're going to win some soft points by doing that, but uh, or we're going to lose some soft points if we don't do that. But it's not a hard constraint. There's there's a hard there's hard and our soft constraints. Uh, prohibited uh, again is uh, hard, which means that if it has that tag, it should not be assigned to it. And then there's the desired is then the soft version of the prohibited. Basically means we would like to avoid that. Similar to the time slot tags, we have these four columns for room tags. So you might say, okay, uh, this is a tag, uh, this is a talk which is going to attract a large audience. So we want to, uh, for example, have that, require that into a large room, right? And you just say, write large there. Now, these four, these eight columns here also come up on a speaker level because most of the time it's not the specific talks where you would, would like to do this but it's on a speaker level so you can just do it on a speaker level too so for example here Gus Poe it's one of our rock star speakers right so um, we are definitely going to require a large room for him um, and it's going to definitely need to be recorded right so we'll just add it as a hard constraint um, so uh, that's an easy way to make sure that those people end up in the rooms you would like them to end up, right? Um, the speakers, furthermore on the speakers, you can also define when they are available. So uh, you can, for example, Amy Call is available all the time, but for specific speakers, you might have requests that they say, okay, I'm, I'm my fly, flight is only arriving in the morning, so uh, I cannot uh, do any talks during that morning because I won't be at the venue yet. Um, in this particular case, um, Guspo is a rock star speaker, but he also likes to party. So um, he's known to go out quite late. And um, we as a conference organizer will uh, are trying to take that into account by not assigning him any talks in the morning because we, we really don't want to be in a situation where we have a full room but no speaker, right? So um, uh, here we've done that by simply uh, blinking out of those three, uh, all of the morning talks. So he will be assigned to a talk in the afternoon. So that's another hard constraint there. If a, if a speaker is not available during a specific time slot, he will not, uh, one of his talks will not be assigned to those time slots, right? Okay, uh, let's get back to talks. So those were all those columns there. Um, furthermore, one extra thing you can do on a talk is, uh, so here OptoPlanner will write down uh, when it is when this talk will happen, right? So this particular securing Hibernate talk, it has no time slot yet. Uh, we don't know wh when it's going to happen or which room, but OptoPlanner will fill that in for us. But there might be an exceptional situation where you say, okay, um, this particular talk here, the troubleshooting reliable Android talk, um, that needs to happen Monday morning at 10.15 in room one. I just know that as a conference organizer um, and I don't want to debate whether or not that's, you know, adheres to the constraints or any or is more optimal to put it there uh, i just want optoplanner to have that talk at that time because i'm in control i'm the user right um, so what we do is we spin that talk that basically means that um, optoplanner will you know pin that talk there uh, he will make sure he, that to look at the speakers to make sure he's not signing any of the other talks of those speakers at the same time and so forth he will take it look in he will take into account all of the constraints but he will not uh, alter the room or time slot of this particular talk, um, which is of course 
something you might want to do for keynotes, right? So you might not even, in this particular case, most of the time you will not even uh, put keynote talks into this things because you'll just uh, plan those separately. Uh, but if you do have uh, um, other talks running at the same time, which is a bit strange for keynotes, but anyway, if you are in that weird situation, um, you might want to do this because you want to make sure that um, during that keynote talk, no one, uh, uh, none of those speakers are assigned uh, a talk in the same uh, somewhere else at the same time. Right. Okay. Um, so the yellow tabs we see here at the bottom, uh, those are actually output from OptaPlanner. So uh, those are just views. So if you change any anything in any of those tabs, OptaPlanner will actually ignore that completely while reading in the file. So you only fill in the uh, great tabs, of course, right? So let's see what happens when we plan this, right? So I'm going to jump back to OptaPlanner. Um, I'm, I'm going to solve this uh, without my changes I did with the time slots though, and um, let me see, click the solve button, right? Uh, so first of all, how do you read the file? Well, let's maybe, so you just click the open button and you select the file you want to uh, read, right? Uh, you have a couple of example files, of course, in the application, so you can get started and, and the structure is correct. Uh, if you want to see any of these files that you loaded, for example, I can load a bigger file with 216 talks. You just click on show in LibreOffice. Do be advised that if you make any changes here, um, you can see this is a temp file. Um, OptoPlan will not pick those up, right? So uh, you can make any changes here, save it somewhere, and then simply you have to um, click the open button here to actually open where you save it, right? Okay, um, so we take, for example, uh, this example file, right? And we solve it. You can see here at the bottom that the score is improving. And then when it is solved, we can open it, right? So here we can open it and we can look at the results. The most interesting result is, of course, the rooms view, where we will see for each of the talks, let me zoom in a little bit, uh, for each of the talks, when which talk is assigned to which room. So what can we see here? Well, um, the first thing we can see is that this is a pin talk. That's why it is a purple talk. If I hover over it, you can also see this. This is a troubleshooting reliable Android talk by Hugo Fox. It is pinned by user, as you can see. That basically, this is a signal to you that if you start pinning things, you might see certain constraints being broken because you pin a lot of talks. Um, that's of course, you know, taking that into account, you're making it more difficult to find a more optimal solution by pin and talks, right? Uh, that's why it's clearly purple there. Um, this is a talk which has, uh, which is assigned perfectly, right? It's a, a so discover AI driven extreme with Beth Lee. You can see uh, she's assigned to room two at 10:15 on Monday, and this ha creates no constraints violations whatsoever. However, um, if we look at this particular talk, this is the securing scalable Docker talk. This has three constraint matches. You can see those in the comment there. And of course, they're all soft. That's why it's orange. If it would be red, it would be a hard constraint broken. But um, this is actually a feasible solution, which means no hard constraints are broken. And you can see here that uh, she has a constraint match for the team track, which I'll look up into in the middle, and for the contents argents level flow violation constraint which I'll also explain in a minute. Now, just to show you what happens if you would actually have a, a, a poor solution, here's actually an infeasible schedule. Now, let me just open it for a second. And you can see here we are actually breaking hard constraints. So what that means that uh, and there's a number of hard constraints. You can there's a list of all of the hard constraints right here. So um, the ones I've already explained earlier: um, room conflict, two rooms being uh, happening, having a talk at the same time; uh, one room having two talks at the same time; speaker conflict, one speaker having two talks at the same time; um, those prohibited time slot tags, or and so forth. Right? Uh, those are all hard constraints. Um, a speaker that's unavailable, and that's a hard constraint. And now if you actually look into the rooms view here, uh, you can see there's a number of uh, red ones here. Those are breaking hard constraints. And for example, if you look at this particular one, we can see that here we have two talks in the same room at the same time, which is of course impossible. Um, and you can see we are losing hard constraints there because it says constraint matches. There's a room conflict between those two rooms. Um, if you look at this particular one, why are we having breaking a hard constraint here? It's because we have a speaker uh, required room tag. So apparently the speaker of this room, either Jamie, uh, Amy or Bat King, and let's look that up, required a par particular um, 
room tag and it's not there. Let's so let's look up Amy. So what's her name? Amy Jones and Bad King. So we have Amy Jones. Here's Amy Jones. She has no real requirements. And then we have Bad King. Oh, here Bad King needs a large room. And as you can see, they're assigned to room six. And if we look at the rooms, room six is not is a recorded room, but it's not a large room. So that needs to change, right? Um, so that's a hard constraint broken. Um, and of course, the others are just soft constraints, which I'll, I'll go through. Now let's let's look let's take a look, little bit to uh, a much better solution here. So here we have one which is much better, which is this. Let me just check here, right? Which one uh, is it? This. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, this is the one I got after I gave it a little bit longer to solve, uh, a few minutes, a minute or two, three, and um, so really gave the chance for OptoPlanner to find uh, a really good solution that we want to put into production. And uh, let's see the assignments here. So we still have soft constraints broken. That's that's there's basically no way to deliver a solution where no soft constraints are broken. But we really minimize the number of soft constraints. You can see there's much less. Uh, orange here if you look at this con at this uh, solution and let's take a look at what we have broken let's take a look at all of the constraints so here's a list of all of the constraints the first one is the team track conflict so what does it mean well if you go to the team track view we can see if somebody joins the conference and attendee goes to the conference and he wants to see the artificial intelligence track he can now actually go first to this talk uh, then three hours no talks but then he has this talk then he has to make a choice so here we have two talks of artificial intelligence at the same time namely learning visual virtualized opto planner and using secure vertex um, like again like I said before this is generated data and you can see we are losing uh, 20 soft points because of that right so um, uh, that is uh, so it would be better if you can actually split this up into different time slots but that creates problems with all of the other constraints. So that's probably why OptoPlanner is not doing it, right? But if he, if OptoPlanner would have the chance, he would do that, right? Um, so you can see here, if you're looking security for security, you can go to this talk. Uh, notice it is orange, but it's not orange because of, oh, it is, is, it is orange because of uh, team tracks. Apparently this is colliding with S44. Yeah, so these two talks are actually in overlapping time slots. You can see this is a lab and this is a conference talk, this one, but both of them are occurring uh, between 10 and 11. Right, so uh, they are overlapping these two talks. Um, this one, oh, say even this one overlaps with, uh, uh, yeah, S04, of course, right? So that's not a difficulty. I could not, for example, by putting this one into this uh, cell, that would have not helped because we have another artificial, we have an artificial lab going on at the time. So that would actually, um, break that soft constraint too. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's actually unsolvable. Yeah, you can have, you can mathematically prove there's no way to not break the soft constraints for artificial intelligence because of the overlapping time slots here. Anyway, um, you can see, so culture, uh, I can follow all of the culture talks uh, up to at least at this point here. I have to make one choice where one of them I cannot uh, attend. Uh, but th that's pretty good, right? Um, sector views, same principle. I want to see everything for healthcare. Um, I can do that. There's actually no, uh, the, these oranges one are about the team tracks conflict. So in fact, uh, we have, we lose no uh, points for the sectors here. No, these are all, all for the team tracks, as you can see. So that's actually very good. We can just watch this entire, uh, so if you want to see the entire healthcare track or transportation tech, we can do that. Um, now, um, you might say this is more important, less important than the team tracks constraint. So you can actually tweak that in OptoPlanner. Right now, those are these these two constraints here, right? Right now, they're both of them are assigned to a weight of 10. But if you want to say this particular constraint is twice as important as the other one, just uh, increase the the constraint to the constraint weight to 20 before solving, of course, right? And then OptoPlanner will take that into account and will much less violate this constraint at, of course, the expense or trade off of the other constraints. Um, what else do we have in here? So we had the sector conflicts. Well, we have the content audience level flow violation, which is basically a difficult way of saying we want to make sure that the easy talks are first for a specific content type, 
at content tag and then the more difficult talk. So for example, if you're uh, learning about Android, that you first have an Android introduction before you have an Android adva advanced talk, right? So you can see this in the content view. So here, uh, so here we have a content tag for TensorFlow, which was, if you remember on our tags on our talks, you could add content tags if you want to do this, right? Which are fine grained uh, tags for our talks. And what we can then do is make sure that the level one, so again, our talks also have an audience level, right? That the level one, the, the talk which has level one, which is this the deliver stable TensorFlow is an, an introductionary talk, um, that those are actually happening, well, before the more difficult ones. And you can see this is the level two talk, and you can see this is later than the level one talk. So you can actually, as an attendee, you can on Monday do the introductory talk and do the advanced or the, the medium talk uh, on Tuesday, which is good, right? Uh, again, we're not losing any points here because of this constraint. Again, we're losing points because of the team track constraint, which is one of the most difficult constraints to actually adhere to. Um, but sometimes we do violate it. So if we look carefully, I'm sure we'll find something. Um, okay, I have to really look carefully. So probably if we have something with level three early, that, that should probably, I'm not seeing any right now. But I'm sure there's, there's. Uh, I'm not seeing any. Okay, that's nice. Um, so what else do we have of constraints? Audience level diversity. This is currently turned off. You can see it's zero. But you can turn this off. That basically means that um, at any given time you can actually have you have both difficult talks and easy talks of uh, um, going on. Right. Uh, language diversity, the one I mentioned earlier, that's if you have French and English talks, that at any given time, if you only speak one language, you can go to a talk. Uh, and of course, we have our tech uh, talks, the soft versions of uh, the, uh, the ones I mentioned earlier. So that's basically the, the solution here. So we get this as an output. We put this, uh, we post this to our users, uh, to our attendees, and then uh, we basically have a better a conference schedule because our attendees can um, go to the talks, uh, uh, follow an entire track or follow an entire sector, um, start with the easy talks before get, seeing the, the more difficult talks and so forth. And it's a completely feasible sp uh, schedule because our speakers um, can deliver all of their talks. So um, you probably want to try this out. So how do you try this out? Well, uh, it's quite easy. You just go to uh, optoplanner.org. You click on the download optoplanner button. Then you will get a zip. You, un you unzip that zip. You run, uh, and in that zip you have something called an examples directory. And there you do run examples.sh or .bat, of course, depending on which operating system you're on. And when that happens, you will see this application. Right. So you just go to optoplanner.org, download the zip, and uh, run the examples. Um, and when you get this application, on the bottom right, you have the conference schedule thing. So you just click on that, and then you get the application I showed earlier, where you can say, OK, I'm going to take a look at one of the examples uh, Excel files, or I am going to open an Excel file. Um, and you, of course, you can copy any of these files to get started, and then just click the solve uh, when you're ready uh, to solve it. And when you want to see it, you can just save it somewhere or you can immediately open it in Excel or LibreOffice. So thank you for watching. And um, if you want to try it out, go to optoplanner.org. Bye.